Hey everybody, Life for That Pants here with another Path of Exile video and in this video we're going to be going through our Corrupting Fever Bleed Gladiator League Start Guide. We're going to go through all of the labs, white maps, we're going to go to red maps and a very very high investment version for the end game. So for our first lab and up to it we're going to start off just uh, going two-hander fizz damage. We're going to take Bravery, we're going to take a Destroyer, this is two-hander fizz stuff. We're going to take Martial Experiences, we're going to go with Unwavering Stance so we can't be stunned. Uh, we're going to take Iron Grip because we're doing lots of projectiles. We're going to go with Relentless and Physical Mastery Overwhelm. That means we can overwhelm a lot of fizz damage reduction from mobs and kill them a lot better. And Tireless, and this is the first 34 points. I'm usually around uh, meeting Lady Diala in the crystal mines or wherever it is, uh, just before you, you go and do uh, Dereso and Calm. Uh, that's where I take this. Also, the life mastery in the Scion life wheel, I would take plus 50 there. For skills, we're going to start off with we're looking for a green, green, red. We're going to put in Splitting Steel, Onslaught, and Chance to Bleed in there. We're going to take a two red link as well, Ancestral Protector and Maim. I wouldn't put any of these in the weapon slot. I would leave these in your body armor, boots, gloves, and helmet uh, because the weapon we're going to be changing quite a lot. Uh, then Dash and War Banner. These are very, very good to pick up pretty early on as well. Uh, Leap Slam as soon as you can. Leap Slam is by far one of the best move speed skills for just spamming it to run through. You're just jumping through the campaign for victory. Uh, once we kill Mervale, we're going to go with Spectral Helix. We're just going to take out Splitting Steel. Throw it on the ground. You don't need it anymore. And we're going to put in Chance to Bleed and Onslaught. And it's exactly the same thing. If we go here, we've got all sorts of chance to bleed with Splitting Steel. We're just going to throw away Splitting Steel and put Spectral Helix in with Chance to Bleed and Onslaught. That's it. That's all you're going to need until Blood Aqueducts. We're going to take maybe Herald of Ash, which is great for clear. We're going to take Blood Rage because we just do more Fizz damage with it. And then after you kill Weaver, we're going to take um, uh, Faster Attacks to put in with our Leap Slam in a green-red socketed item there. And that's it for active skills. Once you get to Act 3, you're going to go to the library. You're going to do the Siosa quest. If you don't know what that is, go to poewiki.net and just type in Siosa. You'll find out. Basically, you do a quest for him. You go find some golden pages. And he will allow you to buy any gems that should have been unlocked by any class up to that point in the campaign. So... In order, I would put, you know, I would buy six of these if you can afford them. Maybe you don't have any orbs of chance or alchemies or whatever they cost. Maybe this, the cost is too prohibitive. But then I would get Corrupting Fever first, Exsanguinate, Kinetic Blast, those three. Life Gain on Hit, Life Tap, and Swift Affliction if you can. If you can fit these in some offhands, then that's great. If you can't fit them in or you don't have the right sockets in your offhands, um, you just pick up anything off the floor. They don't need to be linked. Uh, but you can also get Swift Affliction, Brutality, Controlled Destruction, GMP. GMP you actually get during the campaign at the end of Act 4, so it may be good to leave a green socket for that one. Um, but that's all you need to do up until Blood Aqueducts. And let's swap into what we're going to do in the Cruel Lab. Okay, so this is the difference. Boom, we just added in a couple of things. We've taken Art of the Gladiator. We've gone down here for Bannerman and Champion of the Cause. We've picked up these basic jewel sockets just because maybe you found one at that point. Um, we're taking Vanquisher, which is very good. Um, we're just going down south on this tree for Barbarism and Juggernaut. It's just basically extra life. Devotion, more extra life. Uh, Purity of Flesh, extra life. You might be sensing a theme here. And then we're going to go into the uh, Reservation Mastery Wheel for Sovereignty. And we're going to go through the Reservation. This means that you get a bunch extra um, Reservation Efficiency. You'll have pretty decent Mana Reservation at this point And Mana Regeneration as well. So you can fit in a couple of extra Auras here. Let's go and take a look at the skills we're going to get. Um, if you can fit in another Herald. Maybe Herald of Purity. You might want to do that. I personally put in uh, Herald of Purity because just War Banner and Herald of Ash, maybe not enough. It depends what you feel like. But then we're going to get to the Kinetic Blast swap, and that's at the Blood Aqueduct. So let's take a look at that. And before we do, we're just going to take a quick second in-game to show you what kind of 
uh, weapons you're going to be using. Essentially, you're just going to pick up two handers. Two handers are very important. We've got a couple of you know these nodes on the tree, martial experience and destroyer. These are two hander nodes. So two hander weapons are quite important here. Uh, you're just going to go to a vendor and you're going to sell them a rustic sash. Now the rustic sash has to be either magic, it has to be rare or unique. If you found a unique rustic sash, then this is great for that. I do this recipe, this vendor recipe, about once every act or once every one and a half acts with just whatever good weapon I find on the floor. Um, let's take the serrated void axe, or we can take you know any of these. These sockets will remain, but again, you're picking up weapons off the floor, so it's quite important to not have. Uh, a bunch of your socket pressure inside your weapon because that can change. So we're just going to take this uh, Void Axe over here, a Magic Rustic Sash and a Blacksmith Whetstone. And you can see here it's going to have a 44, uh, 40 to 49% increased physical damage modifier on it. Uh, this changes with um, the rarity of the Rustic Sash. So you can see here it says Tier 8 rustic uh tier eight physical attack damage or increased physical damage if it was a rare rustic sash this would be tier seven if it was unique it would be tier six so if you can find this is i use uh, any essences i'm not i know i'm not going to use during the campaign maybe it's a particularly bad essence or it's you know it's like a, a whispering essence of woe we're not doing a lot of energy shield stuff here so i would just chuck that on a belt um, whatever belt I had, if I could find a rustic sash, maybe we can go buy one from Bestel and we can show this happening. We don't have one from Bestel. I'm going to go and find one. Here we are. We're in Act 6. I found one. Uh, we're just going to buy one of these. Uh, I've got this crappy essence. Oh, let's close this vendor window. So we've got a crappy essence. We're going to make this a rare rustic sash. We're going to vendor this with, and you see here, this is tier level 8. We chuck this in, we get it back, and it's tier 7 increased physical damage. So if you can use one of your essences you're not using during the campaign, this is a fantastic use for it. Um, these, you know, whispering essences aren't worth that much later on anyway. So this is a really great way to speed your way through the campaign, obviously with Leap Slam. And for the normal lab, obviously we're going to go with Blood in the Eyes. This attacks have 50% chance to cause bleeding and... Uh, you know, maiming our enemies and then they take increased physical damage. This is fantastic for us. Now that we've done our cruel lab, we're going to take gratuitous violence from uh, the two ascendancy points we get here. That means basically we get the bleed pops. And this is, for me, always the point where I seriously start to consider moving into the kinetic blast swap, which let's talk about now. We are going to change into the kinetic blast. And you can see just from this, there's not too much changing on the tree. We're removing the destroyer. You've got a, quite a few passives at this point, or passive respect points. So we're removing destroyer. We're removing the other, you know, martial experience, the other two hander nodes. We're removing iron grip because we're not going to be doing uh, our damage via projectiles as much. And we're taking iron will. Uh, this is going to be giving us a bunch of uh, increased damage to our spells. We're taking veteran soldier and we're swapping our physical mastery wheel from uh, from the uh, physical damage reduction into fizz damage with skills that cost life and then also uh we're going to take a resolute technique and this is a great node because we don't have to crit with corrupting fever it's damage over time we don't need to crit with that at all and we're also going to take cannibalistic right because this is you know reduced uh, increased damage with skills that cost life and reduced cost of life because we're using our life to cast all this fizz damage over time so let's get into what our Kinetic Blast setup looks like. Okay, so we've been leveling all our gems and our offhands, and now it's time to swap over to Kinetic Blast. Um, we've got two double red, one blue, one green setups here. We've got one for uh, Kinetic Blast and one for Corrupting Fever. And then for our Spellslinger, Exsanguinate, Brutality, Control, Destruction, we've got a two red, two blue. The other things we need are, um, I think it's in total five, five uh, four red and one green and one blue total. You still have a possible extra four slot somewhere and two weapons, so this should be pretty easy. Um, I generally am collecting these during the campaign. If I see a two green, uh, two red, one green, one blue, then I pick it up. 
no matter what kind of, you know, unless it's a weapon, because I know we're not going to use those. So first of all, Kinetic Blast, we're going to be putting Life Tap, Life Gain on hit and Greater Multiple Projectiles in here. Um, our Corrupting Fever, we're going to put Brutality, Swift Affliction and Efficacy in here. And obviously, you know, you've unlocked Lily at this point, you can just buy all these gems and you've been uh, leveling some in your offhands too. Um, for our Spell Slinger, we're going to go with Exsanguinate, Brutality and Control Destruction, this is really good. And then for our auras and uh, other stuff like vulnerability, blood rage, our most important thing is malevolence. The second most important thing is blood rage. These are the most important things to get. Then I would put, you know, war banner, herald of purity uh, as the second most important things. Vulnerability is your curse. We're going to be using this on, you know, map bosses, unique bosses, whenever we have a, we're struggling a little bit. And then we've got pride here. Um, Pride is one I would drop if I had to drop anything. Uh, it's great if you can fit it. If you can't, don't worry about it. You'll fit it later on. We're going to get a lot more mana reservation efficiency with all of our gear. So this is kind of what I would have set up for around Blood Aqueducts. I would get all this done. Um, the first time I went through Blood Aqueducts with this setup, I didn't have life gain on hit at a very high level. I think you know, I just bought it. Um, and life tap, I think I just bought it as well. It was a little bit janky, like we lost about a half of our life sometimes as we were going through, maybe not hardcore viable, but after we leveled up life gain on hit a bunch, then it suddenly we were never losing life anymore. It was absolutely great. Uh, it feels so free and easy. We finished the campaign with this setup. We still have it in our solo self found. Let's take a look at a map real quick with that setup. Okay, so we're in the map now and we've got, uh, in order of importance, we've got Spell Slinger. Obviously, you know, when we use our wands, we need to throw the Spell Slinger stuff. We've got Malevolence, this is the second most important thing to uh, reserve mana with. We've got Herald of Purity, is a lot of damage, and Minions, which can be used to distract enemies. And I've got War Banner, it's, you know, it's only 3.86% mana reservation. Um, you could chuck on Vitality at level 1 if you wanted, I, you know, it's not for me. Um, and all you do is, you know, you're, you're going around like this, throwing your kinetic blast, uh, and you just start off with blood rage and corrupting fever. So you run off, you do corrupt, corrupting fever and blood rage, and then you just start throwing your uh, kinetic blast at everything. And everything dies, it, you know, the damage over time is very quick, and the, uh, the, the bleed pops are absolutely fantastic. So, you know, you can see... These, all these blue uh, mobs don't really stand a chance. We can go into the uh, the boss arena and we can throw our vulnerability on them. And the, the damage is really, really solid here. This is, you know, this we just come out of maps. We've got our, our first tier two map. And that's basically it for what it looks like just as soon as you come out of the campaign. As I said before, we got absolutely, you know, you don't need very, any good gear for this. This is end of the campaign stuff. We haven't been farming too much. We've just got uh, these terrible, terrible wands with increased fizz damage, fire resistance crafted. Yeah, our gear is really, really poor. You know, these, these gloves we've got, they're just 20% cold resistance and that's it. The one thing I do recommend is getting a turquoise amulet because there's, uh, there's a lot of dex and intelligence on it and this build is quite dex and intelligence starved. This will be really, really useful for you. So let's talk about getting into the Merciless Lab and finishing off our Uber Lab as well. Okay, so we've got the kind of bar swap here and we're just gonna add in the Merciless Lab white maps zone. So, you know, you, I uh, usually finish Merciless before I start mapping. You don't have to, it's up to you. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, I just find it's easier to not have to deal with the extra negative 30 resistances from Kitava. Uh, we just got a couple of uh, medium clusters in here. They're increased damage over time. I I chucked on a couple of notables. The only thing that you really want is you know 20 to 25 percent increased damage over time. You can go for brute for potency. There's phlebotomist. There's student of decay. Um, I think you know flow of life's really good. Is insanely good. Vile reinvigoration, circling oblivion. All of these things. As long as they've just got increased damage over time, that's really really nice. Um, you can add in, you know, these physical damage over time, multiplier ones over here. This is level 77. This is pretty, you know, early mapping stage. Uh, maybe you'll be into white maps at this point, maybe into yellows. That's all you really need. As far as your skills go, you're just leveling up the ones you have. Maybe you get to a five socket by now. 
Um, there's no real issue with changing anything around. It's just going to be uh, just going to be making sure your 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 skills are getting leveled up. Corrupting Fever is a spell skill, so at this point in my offhand, I am leveling six Corrupting Fevers, so that as soon as they hit level 19, I vile them and they maybe hit 20 because that's 15% more damage. It's a big damage boost. It's really really good. I don't want to wait for them to hit 20 so I can get a 21. That takes way too long and it's a big damage boost for me to get it early on. If I vile three of them and one of them goes to 20, then I'm straight away swapping that one in. And then I'm just going to level the other three to 20 and start getting going for level 21s. Um, for our merciless points, we're going to put them in out outmatch and outlast. This gives us frenzy charges on kill with the main hand and endurance charges with our offhand and also more fizz damage over time from our uh, uh, more physical damage whilst at maximum frenzy charges. So it's a big damage boost for us. I think it says uh, it doesn't say here how much but it, it's quite a it's quite a fair amount. Let's get into the uber lab now. Okay, so the Uber Lab, we're just going to chuck this on. And basically, I just added in a extra uh, large cluster jewel, an eight passive fizz damage. You want to get three notables on this. I think Master of the Fundamentals is fantastic. As um, 10% elemental res, it removes some gear uh, dependency. It's 35% increased fizz damage and 35% reduced elemental damage. We're not doing any elemental damage, so it doesn't matter. Um, Battle Hardened as well, great. Another 30% increased physical damage. And then maybe Furious Assault as a third one. If you can't get a third one, it doesn't matter. Just get a, a you know, a eight or nine. Um, you will be going up against all the people who are doing Fizz Trapper this league, which is probably going to be quite a few. As it's a very good boss killer, it's a boss killing league. So these jewels might be very expensive. I would work your way towards one. As you, I mean, this is in red maps. You're probably making, you know, this is by the end of day one, day two. Um, if you're no lifing it, if you're not no lifing it, this is the end of the weekend or on Monday uh, when you've had time to get this far. And this can be done, you know, cheaply or uh, you could just get a level, you know, if it's a uh, eye level 50 to 67, then it's incredibly easy to get three notables on it just by spamming jagged fossils. I think it's one in 11 chance, something like that. Um, but if you can't get a, you know, those are going to be very expensive. If you just get an eye level 80 or something like that from a deli farmer, then it's also going to be relatively cheap. And I think only double the amount of jagged fossils. So you could chuck 20 chaos worth of jagged fossils at it and you'll, you'll hit three notables or at least two in a very good place. So just take some of those, get a, you know, one extra um, medium cluster jewel. So you get some extra damage over time. Um, I've added in these, you know, these nodes over here. And for our Uber Lab, the very last thing we're going to go for is Arena Challenger. So you get those Challenger charges. Um, this does require you to have Blood and Sand as one of your um, one of your auras, so that you get all these ch charges. But you get a bunch extra move speed. You get up to twenty percent increased move speed. Really, really useful for mapping. This build is a mapping beast. Uh, let's get and at this point I would probably move into getting plus one physical spell skill gem wands I wouldn't go with the increased physical damage It's going to put a lot of uh, DPS behind you if you can get increased Physical damage over time multiplier on those or just damage over time multiplier on those two then do that It's going to be about five chaos maybe to get those wands um, You want low intelligence requirements though. That's very very important for this build it's quite dex and int starved. So I would, you know, you can either take proficiency or hard knocks or there's, you know, this is expertise and ancestral knowledge over here. They're just the plus 30 int or dex nodes. They're really, really good. So let's get into a, a bow swap and an ashes swap. Okay, so this is the bow ashes swap. Uh, as you can see here, we've got another eight passive large cluster. This build really, really does give out uh, as much as you put in. So if you just sink in a bunch of currency, then you're going to see a lot of returns. Um, this, you know, we're going to throw another Battle Hard and Master the Fundamentals, Furious Assault. Whichever three notables you take, make sure it just does a lot of extra damage. Um, this, at this point, you will have generated quite a lot of money. Um, 
I would say you've already crafted the boots, you've crafted the gloves, you've crafted the helmet with your tornado shot fires one extra projectile and you've crafted your body armor already. Those are big, big items you should have. There's a lot of defense in them and it's at that point you want to move into Ashes of the Stars and bows. You can keep going with the kinetic blast and wands easily up until that point. So you've, you've done all that. Then you've finished the bow crafting guide, which is going to be out uh, a few days after league launch. Uh, it is deterministic, so you don't have to worry about it. But honestly, I even, I mean, I'm going to be streaming for uh, a week solid, and I'm probably not going to get to this point until maybe day five to seven, something like that. It's going to be a while. I might want to farm a headhunter first. So, but the bow is around 10, maybe, you know, 12 exalts if you're really unlucky um but it is deterministic so let's go into what you will need for the skills so we've got down here the body armor this is going to go in your body armor it cannot go in your bow i know it's all green and only two red and you can get that on the crafting bench very easily the bow is four red one blue and a green there's a lot of off collar in the bow um you can just once you've got a six link bow just chuck it into you know go to the forbidden trove buy some non non blue or non green to red or something like that um or non red to red uh, i think i bought i i turned it uh three red uh on the crafting bench and then i went and bought three non red to red on forbidden trove you could gamble with a tier three verici there's uh quite a few ways to do this it's it's up to you, but I think the, the easiest way in Trade League is just craft three red on the bow and then go and buy the rest on Forbidden Trove. And then you can buy a non-green to green and a non-blue to blue, or just go and do a, a Verici in uh, in research and you'll get, you know, one to three uh, sockets. So in your body armor, you want a default version of tornado shot just a level one tornado shot it doesn't need to be anything better um then we're going with less multiple projectiles the anomalous version we're going to go with life gain on hit uh greater multiple projectiles life tap and awakened chain support this is going to be really really good because it spreads out lots and lots and lots of arrows everywhere and they all have corrupting fever on them and you just you turn everything around you into a feverish mass we're going to go with, for our bow, Corrupting Fever, Anomalous, level 21, 23, if you can get it, it's greatest. Um, obviously, some Anomalous and Divergent things make their appearance here because the Ashes of the Stars gives you up to 30% qu uh, quality on your gems. And the bow is all about adding levels to Corrupting Fever, which is why we have to put this in the bow because you can get level of socketed support gems for bows, but not for body armor so we're going to go with efficacy because it gives us just a bunch of extra damage over time empower so our corrupting fever is leveled up we go with awaken swift affliction awaken brutality and life tap so that we can make sure we we drain out a lot of life um we're going and this is this is the bow this is what it looks like you're going to have plus one to level of socketed gems plus two to level of socketed support gems this is a katarina unveil so you'll have to either um, I just bought items on the trade website that I think they were like five chaos each and they were of Katarina's Veil, like two-handed weapons. Um, there is a chance to unveil this and then you can put it on in the bench. Um, we've got increased physical damage over time. We've got physical damage over time multiplier, uh, you know, three crafted mods and just increased damage over time multiplier uh, naturally. We've got a Maloney's here. The Maloney's, it... Uh, triggers a socketed bow gem when you attack with a bow with a one second cooldown so we're attacking with our tornado shot and in that we're just going to put frenzy maim and culling strike so we're going to generate a lot of frenzy charges this is fantastic and culling strike if we hit with the frenzy then it just culls that thing and that's that's really good so some things will just die at 10 percent life um we've got dash molten shell and life tap here blood and sand very necessary we got the anomalous version um we've got flesh and stone here herald of purity blood rage and enlighten you don't have to have uh two enlightens we've got two here 
you uh, you could just drop pride again pride the run to the litter you just drop pride and it's fine we've got a i'm not sure why this enlightened is level eight here we can just put that at level four um but malevolence and determination very very important determination lots of armor you're gonna be so tanky it's gonna be so good uh the malevolence you take uh you know you dish out a lot of damage um and then that's it for the swap obviously you know you want an ashes of the stars as well um i put crystal skin on mine it's plus one or uh, you know maximum resistance so we're up to 77 fire resistance um it makes us even more tanky it's really good to get a circle of guilt here with uh, increased buff effect of herald of purity and increased fizz damage when affected by herald of purity that's the the, the best one you can get if you can get it and it's corrupt or you get some you know, really good synth implicit modifiers here that's great if not it doesn't matter you're really after only those two lines the headhunter you don't need that for the swap you just need a stygian vice it's fine um and this is where this is how i would set this up let's move into the super high investment version of this okay so it's the you know you've uh, you've been playing for two weeks you've got all of these uh, all of the your ashes of the stars you've got your bow set up you're going around you're destroying cemetery you're dropping many many brother stashes you're welcome um let's get into the very high investment setup the largest difference here is in the items you're going to go with you're going to actually go with the headhunter it's fantastic the whilst they got a bit of a nerf this league um it's still you know very very strong item unsurprisingly we've got fizz damage we've got projectile damages lots of the mods help us out with that and then we're gonna go with forbidden flame and forbidden flesh and we're gonna go with inspirational if you have uh if you can get these i think i paid around 15 exalts each for these in the last league they're gonna be expensive but they're very very good and last but not least let's look at our watcher's eye and unsurprisingly the watcher's eye is just a uh, percent increase to damage over time multiplier while affected by malevolence that's the only really useful mod we can get here um if they're cheap they're cheap if they're not they're not i would get this before the uh the bow and ashes of the stars swap i think it's it's a, a nice damage boost but it's absolutely not you know super necessary um for all the rest of the jewels i would just go with percent increase maximum life and damage over time multiplier um there's a lot of combos you can do here those are two things that are you know really really useful really really good for you i got up to six and a half k life with this um and you know everything in maps just melts uh the there's a few other items you could get in there or well, other modifiers you could get so perhaps uh increased armor or global physical damage or just you know damage over time or physical damage over time multiplier whichever one suits you um there's a lot of flexibility here so that's it for this uh league start guide i hope you like it um come along and check us out uh, on twitch we're going to be streaming. I'm going to be a little bit late to the league start, but I'm going to be playing this build and hoping that my you know, slight tidiness is going to pay off in that I don't have to pay huge amounts of money for everything. Um, this is a super strong build. It's really fun to play. I would highly encourage you to do it. We were playing it a lot last league, so you can check out the VODs from that. Um, if you like this video, please you know chuck it a like. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Let me know what builds you're playing in the comments as well, because I, you know, I, I want a second build. I know that I'm going to play this a lot. I'm thinking about maybe an aura stacker. Uh, not sure what the second build's going to be. There's definitely a lot of bossing potential in this league. So, thanks very much. I love you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.